Gilbert is a character straight out of a Tennessee Williams play, mostly because he was basically Tennessee Williams. Who are you? Answers in the form of English, please. I am Gilbert Fontaine de la Tour d'Autrive, the man of the house. Dale Gribble. Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to check out our Patreon and our sister channel. Anywho, let's do this. Gilbert Fontaine de la Tour d'Autrive, or Gilbert if you want to be a dick about it, voiced by David Herman, because most of the best characters on the show are doing an impression of Tennessee Williams, who Gilbert looks and dresses like. Yes, I expect to combine writing with the... Uh traveling this time as usual. Fun fact, Gilbert and Bill both have Fontaine de la Tour d'Autrive as part of their names, and according to Google Translate, in French this means Fountain of the High Bank Tower, with Reeve translating as Bank or Shore. I know that doesn't really matter, but I took the time to learn that information, so odds and bodkins, you're gonna learn it too. Anywho, Gilbert only appeared in two episodes, but he's rather well remembered for better or for worse. Most people love him for for his first appearance, but hate him for his second, except, well, yeah, he has some really good one-liners. I'm more familiar with sinners than saints, my dear, and sinners always look good. <laughs> We first see him in a beer can named Desire when Hank and the gang visit Bill's family estate in Louisiana's Cajun country known as Chateau d'Autrive where he makes himself known to be a creeper. Oh, <laughs> you kind of snuck up on me there. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I've always been a creeper. Violetta says I creep like the kudzu vines that are slowly but surely strangling our Dixie. Oh, huh. In hindsight, this might be pointing to Violetta being his sister and therefore Bill's cousin, but whatever. This was a side trip while heading to New Orleans because Hank won a shot at throwing a football through a one-foot hole in a giant Alamo beer can at a New Orleans Saints game. Huh. What fascinating thing are y'all doing? Uh, I'm going to be thrown at a target about yay big at the Cowboys-Saints game. If I make it, I win a million dollars. Golden Richards was a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, he caught a touchdown pass in Super Bowl XII. He was a beautiful man. I knew him briefly. <laughs> Gilbert lived with his mother Esme, who was voiced by Meryl Streep, by the way, and his father Alphonse, who apparently was not doing particularly well. My husband, Alphonse Dautrieve. We own's uncle by blood. When did he pass? Oh, he lingers in a room in the back of the house. In addition to them were his sister, spoiler alert, Violetta, and the widows of his two brothers, Girac and Rene. This is my husband, Girac. My late husband, Rene, and I used to make music together. Now, Gilbert was very much about Southern gentlemanry, not to be confused with Lucky's gentleman's pursuits, such as sticking and catfisting, and he takes the opportunity to introduce Bobby to the world of Southern gentlemanry. Well, let's just poke around my old shiffer robe and find you something suitable. My lord, this muggy November weather gives me the horribles. Robert. This here is velvet, not velveteen. A gentleman must learn the difference. My lord. This leads not only to what many consider to be the funniest version of Bobby, but also probably Bobby's best entrance. I present you Young Master Robert. <laughs> Oh my god. Bobby sits next to Gilbert, but Hank is not a fan of Gilbert's influence on his son, so he trades places under the premise of talking sports. Which, yeah, Gilbert cares very little for sports outside of the athletes themselves, but we do get an interesting contrast of personalities. Uh, Bobby, why don't you let me sit next to Gilbert so we can, uh, talk sports? So, uh... Jill Bear, how do the saints look this year, huh? <laughs> I'm more familiar with sinners than saints, my dear. And sinners always look good. <laughs> And Gilbert shows off his accordion skills. I mean, every true Southern gentleman must have some musical talent during some good old-fashioned Cajun entertainment. Mm -hmm. 
Gilbert can tell that Hank is still conflicted on the football throw. He can either do it himself for a chance in a million dollars or have Dandy Don Meredith take the throw for a chance at a hundred thousand. Seeing this, Gilbert gives Hank a piece of advice before the group heads out, possibly tipping the scales in Hank's decision. Well, I need a window seat because this flower is wilting. Oh, Lord. All right, everyone in the car. Now, go, 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 go. Have a pleasant journey. And don't be afraid to ask directions from someone who has already been where you think you need to go. What's that supposed to mean? Let Dandy Don Meredith take the throw. Oh, and in case any of you are wondering why Bobby doesn't continue his love affair with Southern Gentlemanry, well, Hank put an end to that in a totally Hank way. Do you believe I'll give room service a jangle and have them send up some etouffee? No! They all leave, but Bill stays behind because there are three attractive women who are all trying to get into his pants. However, one of them is his cousin. And I may not be a fan of Louisiana with their amazing food, so-so casinos, and piss-poor roads, but that is some Alabama kind of stuff right there. That's like something straight out of a Tennessee Williams play, and yeah, that was intentional. I mean, a beer can named Desire is a play on a streetcar named Desire, probably the best-known Tennessee Williams play. All three girls end up in Bill's bedroom, as does Gilbert, don't question why he's there, and Gilbert finally tells Bill which one is his cousin. <laughs> Gilbert? Your cousin is Violetta. Now how long you been sitting there? 35 years. To me, it's kind of odd that Bill didn't just ask him or his aunt, which was his cousin, or why wouldn't Gilbert or Esme just offer up that information? Maybe they just enjoy the drama. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. And to go on a slight diatribe here, why was Violetta even trying to get with Bill? She has the Dotrieve blood in her veins. The last remaining Dotrieve male. Or, or should I say... Oh, don't bother. Just go out and find a guy who's willing to take on her last name and problem solved. Trust me, she could have her pick of the litter down there, so why doesn't she? Or, let's be honest, Bill would have had a much better life had he picked either Lily or Rose, both young attractive women, and had a family. Oh, darn, you have to live in a mansion with a beautiful woman, you poor bastard. If he wanted to go a shadier route, he could have kept hooking up with both of them until one came up pregnant and just married her. Now, to be fair, he would have to report back to the army base at some point. Plus, the Louisiana swamp probably wouldn't be the best thing for his foot fungus. That being said, there just seems like there are several good endings for Bill here, and he does not take the opportunity, though he does have a pretty good weekend. Nice weekend, Bill. Both of them. Gilbert's second appearance was in Blood and Sauce, where Bill gets depressed, I know, shocker, about not having children or anyone to pass anything down to, which, again, he would have had if he'd just stayed in Louisiana. You're fine, right, Bill? I wish I had a son to pass things down to. <laughs> Boomhauer, can you get him a... Oh, dang it. All right, Bill. Let's hear again how you're lonely and childless and whatnot. So Bill uses a genealogist who uses Google and finds 85 relatives, not all blood, all of whom Bill invites to a family reunion, giving him reason to make the famous Dotrieve barbecue that no one who's known him since he was like six has ever heard of or eaten. I find that strange, but whatever. It also gives him a reason to bust out the last family photo the Dotrieves had taken. That's Uncle Honoré, after the swamp fever claimed his eyesight. That's me. There's my cousin, Gilbert. What a time we had. I would climb trees and swim, and Gilbert made ball gowns out of old mosquito netting. Yes, just as any young southern gentleman would. Also, I might be wrong here, but I'm guessing that this uncle is not actually his uncle, but instead a great uncle that everyone just called uncle. I had an uncle Odie, who was really my grandmother's brother, but we all called him Uncle Odie. Anywho, when it's time for the reunion, Bill is a tad bit disappointed with the turnout, who show up late, I might add. Gilliam, you are vision, and that necktie would be elegance itself if it were knotted properly. 
Gilbert! Bienvenue! Uh, anyone else? Isn't there anyone else? Only you? Anne is even more disappointed to find out that he and Gilbert are the only ones left. Only me? Whom were you expecting? I had, I had a, a, a list. Alas, we two are the utter end of the doe tree of blood. The family tree can be safely cut down and used to build our coffins. May I come in? I just want to point out here that when Gilbert goes inside Bill's house, he leaves his luggage outside for Bill to bring in. I'm sure it's because a southern gentleman doesn't carry his own baggage. It's a nice little detail there. Bill asks about Esme and Violetta, who are both obviously gone by that point. Aunt Esme died of fever. Violetta died suddenly in her sleep. The swamp takes what it calls its own. And Gilbert fills Bill in on the state of the Dotri family, and yeah, it ain't good. Let me tell you of our ill-fated kin. Consumption, drink, imposter, madhouse, public madhouse, barren, barren, barren. Well, pretty much this whole left side, leaving only us. Now, something to touch on here, it's hard not to notice the high number of doe trees that are either sterile or have major health problems physically and mentally. This could possibly be the results of inbreeding, which, if the doe trees have a history of inbreeding, would make Bill's cousin trying to hook up with him make more sense. As well as why Gilbert and Esme took so long to tell Bill the truth of who he was related to. This means it's also possible that Bill himself is sterile. Gilbert, unlike Bill, has a plan to to keep the family name alive, even though a small arts publication probably wouldn't last that long. But the Dotrieve name will live on. Dotrieve's Monthly, a Southern Review of Arts and Letters. A small but proud periodical I have found it that will preserve our name for generations to come. Printed on acid-free paper. Naturally. And he reveals how he paid for it, which is connected to the fate of the Dotry family estate. Uh, our land has been sold to be turned into either a water park or a catfish farm. It seems to depend on whether the euro remains strong. Okay, so Gilbert sells off the estate that had been in the Dotry family for generations, and rather than share the money with Bill, which would make sense seeing as they're the only two Dotrys left, he uses it to start a magazine that he'll be lucky if it's still around in 10 years, especially considering the lowly current state of printed periodicals. Bill gives away most of his leftovers because what's the point of him keeping all of them, and they're a huge hit, which we see when the guys are hanging out with Gilbert included. Yep. Mm, yep. I do declare. Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh. God. He reveals the origins of the doe tree family recipe that everyone loves so much. Yes, the recipe was honed by generations of planters, country lawyers, gentlemen of fortune, and their cooks and manservants and so forth. Yeah, it's not so much the doe tree family recipe as much as it's a recipe conceived by a long line of cooks and manservants some of whom I'm guessing were not necessarily paid for their work or contributions, but hey, it's apparently ridiculously delicious. Also, I'm pretty sure what he's drinking here is a rum cocoa, one of Tennessee Williams' favorite drinks that was mentioned in his play, The Night of the Iguana. It could also be a mint julep, which is the stereotypical drink of the Southern aristocracy, but the garnish is a lime rather than mint, hence why I'm going with rum cocoa. Anywho, Gilbert takes his lead heading off to Austin and whatever kind of wacky adventures he has in store for him down there. Well, Gilliam, as much as I shall miss the dazzle of the local repartee, I fear I must take my leave and be off to Austin. Leave? But we were having so much fun. There's a young poet there whom I hope to publish. And after he's gone, Bill's barbecue really starts to become popular as Hank takes some of the leftovers to work, where it's a hit with Buck and Joe Jack. Damn, that is a flavorful rib. It's like them bones never even existed, honey. And Buck Strickland sees an opportunity to make some money with the recipe. I tell you something, old top. If I knew this bad boy's secret, I could make me a second fortune. 
might come in handy if my bastard son Ray Roy ever gets hold of a competent lawyer. This makes total sense for him to want it considering he owns Sugarfoot's Barbecue. Sugarfoot's Barbecue. So sweet. You could eat it with your feet. Plus, anyone who buys the recipe could very well use it to open up a competing barbecue place in town. So it would make sense for Buck to want to buy it if for no other reason than to keep it away from others. I also think it should be added here that Bill only wanted to sell the recipe as a way of keeping the Dotrieve name alive. He wasn't worried about the money, and a damn good barbecue recipe is most likely going to live on a lot longer than a small literary magazine. So Bill whips up a tasting batch for potential investors to try. The pigs were delivered by a Larson Pig Products truck, by the way. Nice nod there. And Gilbert has impeccable timing, seeing as he just so happens to show up at Bill's tasting party. There's quite a fit going on at my cousin's. Oh lord, I still have my Austin face on. And yeah, once he gets an inkling of what's going on, he ain't happy. Yeah, yo! What is all this? Now hold on, Gilbert. Sir, you are no kin to me, so I will have your silence. Guillaume, explain. After Bill explains exactly what's going on, that he's selling the recipe to continue the Doe Tree family name, even comparing it to Gilbert's magazine, he really ain't happy. Are you mad? We are a family of proud landowners, of state senators and literary men. And you want to sell our family tradition? For money? Okay, punk breaks there, Pocahontas. First off, that line of ancestors Gilbert's so proud of built the family estate, the same family estate that Gilbert sold for money so that it could become a catfish farm or a water park. And I'm willing to bet they'd have a bigger issue with that than Bill selling a recipe that their cooks came up with. Second, when he sold the estate, he didn't share the money with Bill, nor did he give Bill any say in whether the estate was sold. So, yeah, just Gilbert really does not have much of a leg to stand on here, but again, he's got great one-liners. Well, Dana? <laughs> Shut down this whole house! Bill sends everyone away, and at this point, a more vicious side of Gilbert comes out, and it's also around this point that most fans completely turned on his character. And we see that Hank had certainly soured on him. Could you do it? Tell me that. Tell me how. How? How? Bill does not deserve to be left alone with that Jill Bear. I'm going over. A drunken Jill Bear throwing a fit and yelling at a drunk Bill doesn't necessarily sound funny, but <laughs> it is. And this is the scene that Hank walks into. I have sacrificed our land to preserve our dignity. What would you have done with your streetwalker's gold, eh? Bought more of these double-stuffed chocolate sandwich cookies? By the way, j'accuse is French for I accuse, and is possibly a reference to the famous open letter written by Emile Zola. Hank decides to handle the situation the way that Hank handles situations such as this, which is to put himself between Bill and whoever is hurting him. Say, how you doing there, Jill Bear? Bill, I brought you some coffee. Sir, leave us. Let the Dotreves nurse their wounded pride in darkness. Yeah, I keep hearing about the Dotreve pride, but right now all I see are a crying drunk and an angry sissy. If you've got any real pride, stop kicking a man when he's down. You want to talk more about this, you and I will do it outside. And Gilbert handled the situation the way he handles such situations. You know, kind of catty. You yawn? I'm returning to New Orleans. After Gilbert left, Hank and Bill had a conversation with Hank trying to convince Bill to sell the recipe anyway, but Bill refuses to do it without approval from Gilbert because he's family. Again, if Gilbert could sell off the family estate without Bill's permission, why can't Bill sell the recipe? We next see Gilbert at the bus station, I guess waiting for a bus, when he meets a local homeless man and we get a pretty telling interaction. Bye bye. Are you speaking to me? Yeah. Wanna buy a ticket? I'm sorry. 
Not at all. I think it was Lucretius who said nothing human disgusts me. Yeah. By the way, that quote is not from Lucretius, who was an ancient Roman philosopher, but rather the full line is, Nothing human disgusts me, Mr. Shannon, unless it's unkind or violent. And this line comes from, drumroll, The Night of the Iguana by Tennessee Williams. Also, the fact that Gilbert treats the man as he would treat any other person is a plus, seeing as many people treat the homeless as less than human and avoid them at all costs. Bill Hank and Buck show up to try one last time to get Gilbert to agree to sell the recipe with Buck going first and trying to make a personal connection with Gilbert, which does not end up going in the direction that Buck was expecting. Lord. Yeah, I do. Now, I understand you a literary man from Louisiana. Now, you and me, we gotta do the quota sometime. Boy, <laughs> I could show you some things, huh? My word. Uh, anyone else won't give this a whirl? So he takes a step back and lets Bill take a shot, who offers a very fair compromise where the money from the recipe sale will be used to fund the magazine. Which, yeah, that makes total sense and is a win-win situation for Gilbert. Can't be done. A gentleman never reverses his decision. Do look me up, though, when you pass through New Orleans. I could show you things as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let, let, let's go, old top. There ain't nothing more here to try. Except, uh, yeah, he rejects the compromise using faulty logic and makes Buck feel even more uncomfortable, to the extent that he's just ready to drop the whole thing and leave. Bill gets on his knees and literally begs Gilbert to reconsider, and I'm willing to bet the real reason he won't go along with it is because he's hard-headed and stuck in his ways. Just say yes, and I'll never bother you again. My dear cousin... My only cousin. My answer is still no. We see proof of this in his final message to Bill, with Gilbert claiming that Bill will understand when he dies alone, which seems like a rather dark and lonely future to wish on your family, and, to me at least, doesn't in any way explain why Gilbert won't agree to sell. It's like when you're a kid and your parents tell you you'll understand when you're older because they either don't want to explain the truth or they don't really have a reason. Above all, the doe trees must go down to darkness with their honor intact. Trust me. One day, when you're on your deathbed all alone, you'll thank me. <laughs> and so, adieu. Now I have matters to discuss with my new acquaintance. You were saying... I gotta give me a sandwich. And this is the last we see of Gilbert, sitting in a bus station having a conversation with a random homeless man, waiting for his bus back to New Orleans as Bill sulks away defeated. Yeah, I get why people turned on Gilbert's character, but at least Bill was able to pass the recipe on to Bobby, therefore keeping part of his memory alive. So yeah, Gilbert was very much a stand-in for Tennessee Williams, his fashion, his speaking form, the many nods to Williams' works, and overall Gilbert is a caricature of the stereotypical old-school Southern gentleman who's all about pride and manservants. Above all else, originally he was funny yet kinda catty, but then he became, as Hank put it, an angry sissy. He could have easily agreed with Bill and let the recipe be sold, however his twisted version of family pride for a family that's gone and will soon be forgotten got in his way. He's an educated man, at least he knew who Lucretius was, and hopefully his literary magazine did well, though I kinda doubt it. Let's be honest, he very well may have only been using the magazine as a cover to meet with poets he wanted to <clears throat> publish. I do wish we'd seen more of Gilbert. He's easily one of the most standout two appearance characters, if not the most standout, and it'd be interesting if the powers that be had him drop in during the revival. Possibly because he himself ended up selling the recipe to keep his magazine in business. It wouldn't be surprising, no more surprising than Gilbert's distaste for double stuffed chocolate sandwich cookies. What would you have done with your Streetwalker's gold, eh? What more of these? Double stuffed chocolate sandwich cookies? Jack son of a Dinner like youth will be served. Well, I need a window seat because this flower is wilting.